welcome to my long awaited, long overdue rant video. Um, there was a bunch of stuff I was going to talk about, but I'm going to actually cut it down to only a few topics because I don't want to, I don't want to take up like a, an hour long video bitching about useless shit. All of this is useless, but it's just some stuff that's kind of been preying on me that I wanted to say. And if I write it on Facebook, it could spark a huge feud, huge fight. It's not the kind of interaction I want with people. I'm not the kind of person to be in your face bitching about shit anymore. I just usually talk to Josh, keep to myself. But overall, things don't really bother me like they used to anyway. Um, however, there are a couple of things that do bug me, so I do want to touch base on those really quickly. And I'm going to preface this by saying I don't mean offense to anybody for any of this. I'm not talking about anybody in particular. It's just, well, except for the first thing I'll talk about that that is directly about one person but other people do it as well um, but yeah I just uh, this isn't sparked because of anybody in particular really it's just stuff that I've wanted to talk about so let's get going all right first of all let's just get old me out of the way this is the most like who I used to be complaint that I have if that makes any sense to you um, I'm talking about nudity on Facebook. Ah, there she goes, slut shaming again, yada, yada, yada. Um, my problem isn't with people having the freedom to show their bodies. My problem is with people using Facebook as their own personal porn sites. There are porn sites out there for a reason. There are single sites, dating sites, etc., etc., where you can do this shit for a reason. What I have an issue with is people blatantly just showing their entire bodies like a hundred percent nude or they're showing the nipples or whatever and Facebook does nothing about it while they punish other people for far less offenses that is what irritates me they're not consistent at all um, what sparked this was there was this older woman online um, like even older than me like she looks like she's in her 50s and in every photo including her profile photo she has like a bra on that's open to like here and her nipples are out and they're like facing they're like this you know what I mean like she has her entire nipple and tit out and they're just it's just crude I guess and Facebook's not the place for that you know I, I don't care what you say there's community standards for a reason it's not breastfeeding it's not artistic it's just her being a slut basically showing her, her nips to everybody she could send those in private messages she could have them private on her profile she could go to a sex site she doesn't need to be on Facebook where there are children and there are people that don't need to see that kind of shit showing off for no reason and Facebook pretends that they care about your safety and that's why you can't use a name other than your own name or whatever but they don't give a shit about their users whatsoever that's probably a man on their using a woman's pictures and talking to horny pathetic losers um and trying to get them for money you know like hey baby i'll i'll send you more if you send me some money kind of thing and these guys will fall for it and they'll be robbed to, and scammed which is their own fault really but for a site that says that they're looking out for their users to the point where you can't even have um the ability to go under a different name if you wanted to they you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just bullshit is what it is. It is bullshit. And I personally lost my account for having bloody photos, fake blood, mind you, fake bloody photos, or one, one time in particular, I lost my whole account because I had a picture of me in a dress, a long dress that went down to my ankles. And I had, uh, the top pulled down. I think my hand was over my boobs. All you could see was my stomach. And that's it. And only about that much in my stomach. My stomach wasn't overhanging or anything like that. I edited that shit so it looked flat at the time. Um, but I showed a little sliver and they said I went against their community standards and they deleted my entire account. I've been to Facebook jail for posting responses to other people bullying me and talking shit about me. Um... I've had friends that have lost their accounts or been in Facebook jail for comments or pictures or things that aren't even bad. But yeah, this woman can go on and she can show her her entire fucking nipple and tit poking out of her bra and there there's no consequences for that whatsoever. And it just angers me because 
one, that's unfair to other people, um, other users who have gotten in trouble for less. And two, that is just not the place for it. It's social media, I know, but I just, I personally feel like certain things over the top like that should be kept. If you want to, if you want to show yourself off like that and look for fuck buddy or whatnot, go to the sites that are designed for that. There's many out there. They're free. Why go to Facebook? You know what I mean? It, it just, it just irks me, I guess. So that's number one. Um, number two, I have three things I'm going to talk about, by the way. Number two is I, I had made this video before actually, and I deleted it because I didn't want to offend anybody, but now I don't really care. It's just something that needs to be said. I guess I feel the need to speak out about it myself. And it's, uh, it's about cultural appropriation and race based hatred, etc., etc. Um, I just think people nowadays are pussies <laughs> for lack of a better word. Everybody's offended by everything. And I know this is a video about me being offended by stuff. I see the irony in it noted. Um, but they, you know, like I see these articles all the time. This movie wouldn't fly. That movie wouldn't fly. This is sexist. This is racist. This is this, this is that. It's like, when the hell do people become such special snowflakes? Everything had to be one certain way or else they're, they're super offended. You can't have a special, a certain holiday shirt because it says Christ on it or Christmas instead of Xmas, or maybe it has an X on it and that might make them think about sex. Or, you know, you can't use these certain colors because that color belongs to this tribe over here. And you can't dress up as, as this for Halloween because that's making fun of this or making fun of that. And you can't, you know what I mean? Like you can't do anything nowadays. You can't wear dreads because dreads are, are black people only kind of, sh I used to wear dreads back in my early goth days. You know what I mean? Like, was I taken from black people? I had black people coming up to me asking me how I did it. You know, it's no offense to anybody. If you happen to like something from another culture, you know, and it's, it's gone over into movies in such a way that it's ruined a lot of fucking movies too, in my opinion, where they can take all these previously white characters and turn them into black characters. And I've got nothing against black people. I'm not white myself, but like the gunslinger, they made him black, uh, wrinkle in time. They made this redheaded girl into a black girl. You know, they, they can take these white characters and turn them black. But if they took uh, an ethnic character and turn them white, all hell would break loose and suddenly the movie would bomb because they're racist because, oh no, they took a role away from a black person. But yeah, black people can take all these characters, these well-known and beloved characters, and they could all be turned black and it's fine. Like if the character's not written that way in, in a novel or book or something that's kind of like a staple, I really don't think it should be changed personally. And that's not because I don't want to see black people or ethnic people in a movie. It's just because like, like the gunslinger, he's described as having piercing blue eyes and looking kind of like Clint Eastwood. But this guy that they chose who I, I actually like that actor. He doesn't look anything like that. And the, the movie bombed anyway, because it wasn't anything like it was supposed to be. They try to jam too much in. I haven't even seen it, but I've read enough about it. I, I do have it to watch at some point, but I just haven't gone around to it. But, um, they just changed up like the whole character. Uh, and I don't understand why, you know, um, they did it back in the day with Halle Berry when they made her a cat woman. But um, as far as I know, there's nothing specifying cat woman was white. So, you know, that's all right. But like, I know Meg from a wrinkle in time, she wasn't black. She was very specifically described. And again, from what I heard, they've completely gone off of what the books were supposed to be and they changed it so much that that movie bombed as well which could have been an amazing movie but they fucking ruined it um i just think that it's hypocritical and it's wrong to be okay with taking you know white characters in movies and changing their race but if they took you know an ethnic character and they made them white you would never hear the end of it. This race shit, these race wars, they've got to stop at some point. I, I know it's just getting worse and worse instead of getting better as we progress as society, as a society. Um, but people are going the opposite way in every way possible. They're not getting smarter. They're not getting more tolerant. They're not getting more helpful. We're just getting worse and worse and more violent and 
less tolerant in general and it's really sad to see it really really is um it's scary as well it, i think it's terrifying um but i don't know that's just my two cents about it i just i just wish that what was okay for one race was okay for everybody else and people would just stop looking over into things and finding reasons to be offended about things that have nothing to do with them which leads me into my last topic which will probably be the longest topic and that is relationships i see these things online all the time well what if he's this age and she's this age or um what's up with people getting engaged after knowing each other for such and such amount of time and then they just sit there and dog on people and i i've gotten my fair share of being dogged on not only from my past relationship but in a way this one too not because of his age, because he's more age appropriate, but because we got engaged so fast. What people don't seem to understand is that there is no time limit on an engagement. You can get engaged the day you meet, but that doesn't mean you have to follow through with it or you have to get married the next day or the next week or the next month or the next year even. If somebody meets somebody else and they feel that spark and they love each other enough that they think they want to get married that fast, so be it. We need more love in this world. If somebody wants to live together as husband and wife, but they don't want to get married and they want to live that way for 20, 30, 40 years, the rest of their lives, that is also up to them. It is nobody's business what goes on in somebody's relationship except for the people in that relationship. Josh and I got engaged within 24 hours of meeting and, uh, People were like, holy shit, that's stupid. You met online, that's stupid. It's not going to last, that's stupid. That's not how we feel. You know, that's not what we've lived. That's not what we've experienced. And personally, we don't really care if people approve or not. Um, I don't have to sit here and consistently justify my relationship. I made it to the altar. You know, we got married. We, we did what it took to get together. If something is important to you, like I tell Josh all the time, if something is important to you, you'll make it happen. It, you'll do what it takes to make it happen, to make it work. And with his ex, they were engaged. They were together for a couple years and they never even lived together. They just never, they never got their shit together enough to live together. And I was like, well, it must not have been all that important to you. You couldn't save up enough or... You wouldn't spend money elsewhere and you did this and did that. Other things became important. But if living together and your relationship was that important, you would have made it happen. And he agreed. And that's, that is the way that I feel. Um, I met Josh. He, he had already seen me online and he got attached to me from my posts, from my videos, from my interactions. I saw his smile, made me feel really warm inside, but I didn't know anything about him. Um, we spoke one time and there was something about him that broke through and it was just, he was just something special, really, really special. And I felt like this is what I have been waiting for my whole life. And he asked me to be his girlfriend that day by the next conversation, he asked me to marry him. And he was so happy when I said yes, like he was just like, oh, yes, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. And I was like, this is, this is an amazing feeling. And even if it didn't work out and I didn't make it over here or whatnot, that was not like a legal binding anything. I mean, it, it was nice to think he wanted to marry me. It could have gone either way. You know, it really could have. Um, that was only the second day we had talked, you know, but I'm the kind of person that likes everything different, big and unusual and unique. And like it's in the movies, you know, I'm not the kind of person to follow the rules and go by what society says is okay. And I don't do this on purpose. This is just who I am inside and who I've always been. I just, I like what I like and I like things to be boom, 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 different, not, well, let's get to know each other first and blah, blah. I've done that by the way, hasn't worked. I've waited to get married. I've waited to move in with somebody. I've taken it slow. I've been single. It, it just doesn't work for me. What works for me is I see what I want and I take it. I see what I want. I go for it. I don't, life is too short to hold back and be like, well, we need to wait. I mean, there, there's, there's something to be said about being smart about things, but in the position I was in at that time, 
there was really no reason to wait and be smart because my situation really couldn't gotten any worse. I was in a loveless marriage and he betrayed me. However you look at it in my eyes and for what he knew and what our relationship was between us, what he did was a huge betrayal and it killed us. He didn't care anyway to start with. We were both unhappy and we were both lonely even though we were married. So it really, what, what would have been the reason for staying? The stability, money, that's not a reason to stay with somebody. And it just, this all just kind of happened at the right time. And I felt something and Josh felt something and we just came together. And within a week of us dating or whatnot, within five days, he had sent me his military ring. We had sent each other something that was really treasured between both of us. You know, I sent him my most treasured items. He sent me his most treasured items, a card and a letter and by the next week I was moving out. I'm pretty sure the next week or the week after I was moving out, I had already had plans to come here and I didn't have a job at the time, but I made it happen. You know, I, I did it. I paid for it. I had, I had a little bit of help. Um, actually I had great help from one friend in the end, but I had to buy, you know, I'd pay for my own luggage and, you know, lots of stuff involved with coming here and it was important to me and I did it on his side, his job was to get us a place to live because he did not like the house he lived in, get a better job because he had actually lost his job while I was waiting to come over here. So that was really scary. So it was get a different job, you know, get a place, get the power turned on the water, all that shit, you know, get everything here ready for me. And he did all that. So we each had our own part to play. We each did it. We made it work. He, he did all this to get us set. I did all this to get me over here and together we created this life, you know, for us and we weren't able to get married as fast as we wanted to. We were flip flopping on the days, wasn't sure when, um, he wanted my birthday, but then I thought, you know, it was such a sweet gesture. That was a day I was going to pick, but at the same time, I didn't want it to be, it's, our anniversary and it's my birthday. I wanted a day that could be for both of us. And so we chose the day that we met and that day was coming up. We had a rush, rush, rush. We didn't have time to get clothes or anything. We had to go to Goodwill and throw on whatever we could that fit. We were in some lady's house. I mean, it wasn't really like a wedding wedding at all, but we, we got married. We have each other. We are legally husband and wife and we couldn't be happier. And We've been together over a year now, and I know people will scoff and say, oh, well, it's only been a year, but every, every experience has to start somewhere. You know, every relationship has to start somewhere. It might only be a year and something now, but it's going to build from there a year, two years, three years, four years, you know, um, we are compatible. We are in love. We are happy. He, he is every single thing to me and I just don't know what I would do or where I, I would be without him um, because this is what I have wanted my whole life. Like it always almost brings me to tears when I talk about it seriously. Like it took me a really long time to find this and I'm not going to sit around and have somebody naysay my relationship just because we jumped into it fast. You know, you guys don't know what it's like or not you guys, but the, the ones talking shit. Nobody knows what it's like to be me, what I've gone through, how I feel, how empty I felt my entire life, how alone I've always felt and the constant search for love and acceptance and to find somebody who would just want to be with me for me, not make me feel like I'm worthless or there's everybody else better than me out there. I'm a hugely flawed human being. I've got a lot of issues, a lot of baggage and a lot of problems. So it takes a really special kind of person to be able to put up with that and deal with my ups and downs and, you know, my issues. And he does a, a bang up job. Um, Southern gentleman, you know, kind of thing. But, uh, he, he's just everything. And just because it's not what you would do doesn't make it wrong. Nobody knows how we are together when the cameras are off and we're alone. Nobody knows the things that we say to each other, how we feel when we're together, how 
complete we are when we are with each other. Um, and every relationship I go into, I give it my all. I give everything I have wanting it to work as you should. And so there's been times when I've thought that we were compatible. I've thought everything was great, but it's a different feeling. And again, it's something only I know because only I am experiencing my part in it. But if you see someone online and they, they haven't gotten married and they have kids together or they, they live together, but they're not legally married or they've jumped and gotten engaged right away, or they've gotten married right away. It's not your business. It is nobody's business to judge that or to try to bring it down or to talk shit or be like, well, that's not going to last. How do you know? You know, like one person said on one comment I saw, you could be with somebody for 10 years or more and have waited to get married and move in with each other and your relationship could still end. There is no guarantee. There are no guarantees in life except that you're going to die. You know, there are like, you know, what was that old saying? Uh, the only thing that's guaranteed a death and taxes. You pretty much that's true. You know, there is no guarantee that your relationship is going to last. I mean, for all I know, we could end up divorced one day. Well, I don't see that happening, but you, you can't a hundred percent guarantee anything. And if somebody is happy with a person that they're with in the moment, in the future, whatever, it's not your business and it's not your business to bring them down and try to say that, well, well, it's because no, it's not because of anything. It's because you're an ass is what it's because it's their relationship. The two people in it, they know if they're happy or not. And if it's their decision and they both made it and they're both legal, <laughs> that's all it should matter. And whether my last relationship failed or not, he was legal. It was a decision we both made together. And so it should have been left alone. It wasn't, it failed on its own. Inevitably, if it was going to fail, it was going to fail. And nobody has a say in if we were going to be together forever or not. The same with all my past relationships. It's up to me and the other person in it if we're going to make it or not. And we never have. I never had the respect or the love, you know, that I needed that I demand. No, just kidding. I never had the respect and love that I need and that I deserve. And I'm not the kind of person to keep anything around me that doesn't make me happy. And if a relationship is going sour and I know that what I'm giving isn't being given back, I want out, which is only fair. I mean, I'm fucking 42 years old now and it's taken me this long to finally be happy. And, um, with somebody that I don't have to justify and with somebody, I mean, there's 10 years between us, but that's, even my mom was 10 years older than my dad, my real dad. And, you know, I think my stepdad was 10 years older than my mom. And it's just 10 years seems to be kind of the, the, the safe age, the, the age gap that seems to be in most of the steady relationships that I've personally ever encountered in my life. So that's a good sign to me. Um, but he, he knows how to treat me. He knows what to do. He knows how to act. He knows how to respect. He knows how to work. He knows how to love. He knows how to cherish and to not ignore me and make me feel loved and special and beautiful and perfect. You know, I, I never feel like he's going to look at somebody else or run off or cheat on me or anything. I feel like I'm, I'm appreciated for everything and every, every way that I am. And, you know, whether we got into this really fast and I moved over here really fast and people can't understand that. Oh, well, you're not the one who did it. You're not the one who lived through it. You're not the one who is living through it. Only he and I are. So it's our life and our decision. And maybe you should find something more constructive to do with your time. Um, and not just me, but anybody else that you see online. If you see a huge age gap, like I was in, if both people are legal. That's all that should matter. If a mistake is made and both parties want to be in it, so be it. If it's going to end, it's going to end. And it's not up to you to encourage that or talk shit so that, you know, hoping that they end or trying to come in between two people. If it's going to end, it's going to end with or without your help, you know, or your, your nagging and shit talking and naysaying. It, it's, it's up to the two people in a relationship to make that relationship work, regardless of how old they are, what sex they are, uh, what their past relationships were like or whatever. You know, he and I argue sometimes as everybody does. And 
what you do in those situations is you care about the other person enough to listen to what they're saying, fix whatever problems are there, and you get over it. You get over it and you move on. Every relationship has ups and downs, but it's how you deal with those ups and downs that matter and that will guarantee a long and happy relationship. And that is another way that I know that this this relationship is different because it's not like the other relationships I've had when we've gotten to little spats or whatnot or whatever, you know, because I'm quite... I'm quite hard to get along with because I've got so many issues and I've got so many trust issues and I just get stressed out a lot and sometimes my mouth runs away from me and I'm just like rah, 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 rah. <laughs> and um you know he just he always makes me feel like he just loves me so much and he just hugs me and comes up to me and holds me and I just I always feel special and important and if he was 10 years younger, 10 years older, 20 years younger, 20 years older, I'd still love him regardless. You know, age shouldn't matter. Sex shouldn't matter. What should matter is the person and how you two are together, how you feel together. And again, I know I've repeated myself so much. I do that. I'm sorry. But um, again, it's nobody's business but the people in a relationship. And I just think it's a load of shit when people try to give their two cents and something that just doesn't involve them. It doesn't have any impact on your life whatsoever and I just wanted to say that because I know here and there I've seen a couple of comments when I first moved here um on Facebook saying like well I personally think that was way too fast and it's like I I restrained myself from responding to that but you can consider this kind of my my response to it I don't really care what anybody thinks because it's my life and I'm gonna live my life the way I want the way I always have and not one single person out there can stop me or change me because this is who I am and my decisions are my own to make. I'm an adult and if I make the wrong decision in life and I fuck up, then that's my mistake to make as well. So, you know, that's all I have to say about that. And thank you guys for listening. I know this is different from the kind of rants I used to have, but these are just the things I wanted to get off my chest. I'm going to go out there and see my husband <laughs> and I will talk to you guys later. Not sure when I'm going to upload this, but be at some point and um thank you guys for watching and i will see you around